record button now as we speak. Second, if any of you have questions, all of you are on mute right now, but if you have questions, you are free to click the chat button um, at the bottom and uh, go ahead and ask those at any point, and I will try to my best to answer them. And, and then the last uh, tidbit that I wanted to bring up, uh, and I, we'll talk a little bit about Wasabi Ventures uh, Stables more at the end, is that uh, um, I know we're dealing with a, a, a wider range of experiences here on the, on the phone, and that's the point of the webinars, is to give uh, opportunity for people who have varying degrees of understanding of the racing business uh, a chance to ask questions and understand um, sort of what, uh, you know, what the business is all about and what we're trying to do. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and try to share my screen. I'm going to share a visual here, and hopefully everyone sees that uh, screen about how claiming works. So, um, so uh, claiming, um, for those uh, who are new to racing, uh, claiming races at the simplest form are races where every horse that you see in the race, every horse that's entered in the race, is for sale. And it's claiming is probably one of the most interesting aspects of the racing business, of the horse racing business, because it's unlike anything else in sports. There's, there's no other aspect in any other sport that allows you to purchase the participants while they're competing. Um, I, I can't think of another sport that exists that is like that. And so, uh, and so horse racing is unique in that way. Um, um, so, and the other thing to keep in mind is, is that in, the, in North America, 95% of all of the races that are happening are claiming races, meaning at any given point, 95% of all the horses racing are for sale. And so you might think as, a, as uh, someone that might be new to things, well, what the heck? How can you run a sport where everything's for sale? And uh, and what that's why the ownership aspect of of what we're doing is so interesting, because claiming, um, as we'll walk through the process here in a couple minutes, allows multiple games to be being played at the exact same time. And once you we talk about claiming, you'll understand that more. So let's jump into sort of how claiming works. So. Claiming starts with that you have to be a licensed owner in whatever state that you're having to, to want to claim a horse. Um, um, so Wasabi Venture Stables, in this case, uh, is, is licensed. So we're licensed and ready to start claiming. We select a trainer, um, and, the, and generally you have one trainer that you're working with per track where you're trying to claim. Um, so right now at Laurel, we are working with uh, Beth Wharton, Dorothy Wharton. Um, she is our trainer that is claiming for us at Laurel. Um, Jane Sabelli is claiming for us right now at, uh, at Gulfstream in Florida. Um, and uh, so those trainers work with us, and uh, which brings us to the next uh, sort of bullet, step three. We start researching claims. So this afternoon, as a, as a matter of fact, I'm going to hold this up so you can, uh, hopefully you can see my, uh, my, uh, my image here. I have the uh, past performances that came out that are up and available for Saturday at Laurel. So this tells me all of the horses that are entered and, uh, you know, and all of the races are claiming races. There are nine races on the card. Eight, all but one of them are claiming races. So there's plenty of opportunities to look for horses that might be interesting to claim. So we'll start researching them. And I will send a quick text to, to uh, uh, Beth Warden, the trainer, and say, hey, I'm, I, I think this one might be interesting. Or she may send a text back to me and say it's interesting. We'll go back and forth a little bit, um, which gets us to step four. Uh, at that point, uh, uh, the trainer and our staff starts listening for secret sort of information, if you will. Um, tidbits about a, uh, a trainer who's put the horse up for training, how they train the horses, 
um, uh, how aggressive they tend to be or not aggressive. And this is where step four is where it really starts to get interesting. Um, and so, because you can, you, you got to understand that you have a, the way claiming works is, is that you don't physically get to touch the horse before you buy it, your, before you claim it. So you're going on sort of secret information, if you will, what a groom might tell you or an exercise rider that you have a relationship with, um, or maybe even a trainer that's trained the horse in the past. Um, is the horse physically fit? Is he physically sound? Does he have issues or not issues? Is he just a slow horse? And, you know, they're putting him in at a certain price um, to, uh, you know, to determine, you know, to, to unload that horse. Um, the, that, which brings us to another interesting point, which is claiming, um, there are levels of claiming. So once again, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up the past performance. This first race at Laurel on, on Saturday uh, is a maiden claiming race where all of the horses are for sale for around $10,000. Um, there are other types of races where the price would go up or down from there. So, and obviously the better the race, the higher the price, and therefore the higher the claiming price and the higher the purse. So you have these situations where trainers and, uh, and owners are trying to play a game to determine, hey, we want to run the horse at the best level that has the best chance, where it has the best chance of winning. But obviously, we also have to keep in mind that the horse is actually for sale if we put it in a claiming race. So you, you combine those two things together and you get a situation where you, uh, where you, um, you have the game going on. Is, is someone putting the horse that's for sale for $20,000, up for claim for $20,000, when it was for sale for $30,000 last time, do they think less of it? Or is there actually something wrong with it? Or are they trying to be aggressive so that they can go win a race? And that's the interesting things that are happening um, in steps three and four. Um, and so there's a game within the game. Step five, we deposit the money with the, uh, uh, with the, with the, with the um, track. There's a track bookkeeper. Every track in every state has a bookkeeper and we wire the money in and it's sort of like a mini bank and you have to have enough money to cover the claim and the taxes um, or you can't claim a horse. And then on race day, we, uh, we look and watch the horse. As the horse is getting uh, sort of conditioned, as it's in the paddock, as it's walking around, we're looking and we're seeing if it's physically fit at that point or does, does, it, uh, does it look like it's under, malnourished even. All of these things we're exploring. And then, you know, five minutes or ten minutes, depending on the track, before the race, we walk into the tr uh, uh, the track uh, racing office and we drop a little slip of paper, a claiming slip into a box and we say, hey, we want this horse um, and for the price that's listed. And then at that point, we own the horse. <laughs> um, uh, no matter where the horse runs, if the horse uh, has an issue during the race physically, um, we own the horse. The minute it steps on the turf uh, or, the, or the dirt and on the track, we own the horse at that point. So that's why that gaming um, comes back into play. So that's why all that, that sort of secret information, understanding information, that back channel story is so important. That research and the team that we have working with us is so important. The horse then runs, and what we're hoping for is that the horse finishes second and runs well. That's always a perfect outcome. If that happens, and the reason you may ask yourself, why do you care that it runs second? Um, so first of all, you have to understand that the purse money that is earned in that race is the purse money goes to the previous owner, the owner who we claimed from. That does not go to us. We own the horse, but the purse money for that particular race goes to the, to the current owner. So by having it finish second, we keep what are known as conditions. Once again, looking back, the second race, for example, here um, at Laurel on Saturday is for non-winners of three, meaning they have never won three races. That's known as conditions. 
So in that race, to enter that race, you can't have ever won, that horse can never have won three races. So if, our, if we claim a horse and it wins a race, it loses a condition. Now, it's, now it can't be in the non-winners of three. It has to run in non-winners of four, or it has to run in open claiming. So we want to keep that condition for us. Um, number, step number nine that you'll see here is, is, is probably really interesting. Um, and this is also unique. Remember I told you in step seven that we dropped the, the claim slip in a box. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what happens if more than one owner or trainer out there wants to claim the same horse? Well, that's what step nine is. If there is more than one person, they open the box up. And if there are two slips for the same horse, they shake on it. It's called shaking. And they have a little bottle or in the modern times, they might have a computer program that randomly picks which one of the two or three or four or six or nine, which one of those groups gets the horse. And if you're lucky enough to outshake the others, you get the horse. And step 10, your trainer goes to the paddock after the race, puts the bridle and the halter on, your bridle and your halter, and they escort it away. <laughs> and we own the horse if we, if we won the shake. And then in step 11, I email everyone and let them know, hey, we have a new horse and now's your chance to become an owner. And that, in, this, in a nutshell, is the claiming process. Um, there's a lot of nuance to it. I'm going to switch back and stop sharing the screen for a second so, I, so I can, everybody can see me. And hopefully everyone can see me uh, at this point. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's how, uh, that's how uh, claiming works. I went through that pretty quickly, um, and it can be complicated, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions that might have came up um, as you, uh, maybe you're typing in questions. Um, and in a second, I will warn everyone and we'll open up the phone lines. So in case there's tons of background noise, in case Chris Eldred's dog is uh, attacking the, uh, the computers or something, um, we're ready. So we got the background noise ready, but, um, but we'll see if anybody types in any questions in the meantime. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up all of, I'm gonna unmute everyone, I hope. Oh, oh, thanks, William, that, uh, that, that, was a, that was a good description, thank you. I'm gonna unmute everyone, so if everybody, anybody wants to talk, now's your chance to ask a question verbally. Wow, was, was I that good at describing uh, claiming? So let me tell you, while, 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 let me tell you, I'm a, I love telling stories. So let me tell you a true story here. Um, we claimed a horse last year at, in New York. Uh, the horse's name was Patton Proud. Um, and this is, this is the interesting aspect of Patton, of, of claiming. And this is why when you do it well and you learn things, um, it's, it makes it very interesting and why having a great team is important. So we claimed a horse to call Pat and Proud in New York. Um, I think, I, I actually, I'm certain we claimed it at Saratoga. So we claimed it at Saratoga, and, um, and, uh, which is great. Uh, wonderful place, wonderful place to watch racing, wonderful place to, to claim horses too. Um, um, and uh, we claimed the horse, we got it back to the barn, and the next day, our trainer, Gary Gallo, uh, messaged and said, hey, yeah, this horse has got an issue. Um, it's, it's, got, it's got an ongoing issue that's going to be a problem. We're not going to want to keep this horse long term. Um, you, uh, you, you're going to want to, uh, you're going to want to get this horse back and have someone else claim it. Now, you can't just run that horse back right away, um, uh, because there's, because, because you want to give the impression that you like the horse. <laughs> so, so three things happened with Pat and Proud. One, Gary Gallo nursed the horse along, didn't work it very hard kept it healthy, kept it to get back to the race. At the same time, we strategically made it look like we loved the horse <laughs> and that the horse was, a, was, gonna, was gonna, we wanted it to have a long career with us. And then we, then we put it in a race where it was gonna be so tempting 
that someone would have to claim it. And that's exactly what happened. Three people tried to claim it. Um, now, Pat and Proud is still running. There's, there's just so we're clear, if you look up Pat and Proud, now Pat and Proud scratched the last race. And that was probably four months ago. It's run since then and actually won a race since then. But, um, but the point is, is that that was a situation where we had, we knew long term, sooner or later, you couldn't train this horse hard. Remember, these are athletes. And if you can't train hard and you've got to nurse it along, you're only going to be able to get so much out of it. And that's, that was the situation with Pat and Brown. By having a great team and understanding right away what the long-term story was, we minimized any exposure from a cost standpoint, and we were able to, we got almost all of our money back, including the training fees. It was almost a break-even horse with all things considered when it, when it could have been a disastrous situation. Um, Couple questions came in. Can you claim more than one horse in a single race? And the answer is no. You can only claim one horse in a race. Uh, in most places, now you can claim more than one horse in a day. We could claim a horse in every race if we wanted to, but that would be, well, nuts. Um, but, uh, but you can, you can do that. Um, uh, the, the second uh, uh, piece of that is in some states now, the same trainer, but for different owners, is allowed to claim more than one horse in a race. Florida, for example, just changed that rule. Um, so, um, but that's but you're not allowed to claim more than one horse in a race. Will any uh, uh, Chris Eldridge ask? Will any of the horses we currently have go to a claim in a race or two? It's very possible, uh, Chris. For example, we have a horse that's probably running on Sunday. It'll get entered tomorrow. It's going to be in a claiming race, Slick William. Slick William, we, we claimed two-plus weeks ago for $9,000. We're putting it in a race where it's, where it's going to go for $16,000 if it gets claimed. So net, if it, if it gets claimed, we net $7,000 in the transaction in one race. Plus, remember we get whatever purse money gets earned in that race. So I was just doing a back of the napkin math. If, if now this ifs and buts and all those good things, but if in the race that we're in, if, if we win the race, um, if, we win, we, if we would win that race and it would get claims, we would net about $15,000 after expenses, above and beyond, the money. So there's that level of profit sort of happening. Not bad for two and a half weeks in this. And remember, this is a game where you're not in it to get rich. You're in it for the entertainment factor. But when you have, but we're running it like a business. So we're not trying to lose money either. Um, but that's, that's, uh, um, so that's, that's, uh, that's how this game gets played. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean uh, Slick Williams going to win on, on Sunday. We're hoping. It doesn't mean he's going to get claimed either because he's stepping up in class. you got to remember everybody else is looking and saying, now what I will tell you is there's a chance that Slick William gets claimed. There were three people that tried to claim Slick William when we bought them. <laughs> so those same people probably still like him. Now the question is, do they like him at 9,000? At 16,000, like they liked him at 9,000? There's a chance. It's not out of the question. I will say this. We don't want the horse to get claimed. It's not like we're going into this race hoping it gets claimed. That's insider info there for you. There's nothing wrong with Slick William. We like Slick William. Um, I'm trusting everybody on the phone. I probably shouldn't have done that, but most of you are owners. So, um, but but this is not a this is not a case where we're trying to dump it. But I just did the math for you. So if it does get claimed, it's not the end of the world either. It's we don't love it that much. So, <laughs> so uh, William uh, asked a question. Maybe elaborate on how to how you conduct the secret part to distinguish between a horse that a trainer is trying to dump um, that may be injured versus one that is trying to win a race. This must be one of the toughest aspects of claiming, right? Yes, it is downright tough, and that's why the team is so important. Um, and so. I'll give you a little backstory here, and I'll leave out horses' names and people's names here, um, just so you understand. But uh, we just this just this week, 
just this week. So I'm going to pick up, once again, I'm going to show you, this is Friday's past performance. <laughs> I got them all scattered all over my office here. But this is Friday's schedule. You know, this is what the, the card for Friday at Laurel. And I circled a couple, and I'll keep it away, but, <laughs> but I circled a couple, and I sent them off to Beth um, when I circled them. And I said, hey, what do you think about this one, and what do you think about that one? And she messaged back, hey, give me, a cu give me an hour or so, and I'll, I'll take a look. And so she messaged back, and she right away said, horse XYZ, not a good choice. And, and that's because trainer XYZ is a butcher runs the horses into the ground, overtrains them. 75% of the time when you claim a horse from that person, you're getting a problem horse. Don't, we don't ever want to claim a horse from that person. So that's kind of the backstory information that's happening. Let me give you another story, William, that might even give you more data. There was a horse two weeks ago that we were very interested in claiming, and an hour before the race, an hour before the race, uh, I was at the track and Beth got a text message. Um, she was at the track with me at Laurel and she got a text message from the trainer before, not the current trainer, but the trainer that had the horse before and said, listen, this horse is a bleeder. You don't want this horse. It, 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 it bleeds when it races. Once again, not unhealthy for the horse, not, <laughs> let me make that clear, not perfectly healthy for the horse, but not unsafe for the horse to race. But it, generally speaking, if you're not getting a clean horse, don't claim. And that was, that's one of those very last minute where it's good to have a good reputation and to allow people to do that. So, um, so that's, that's one important um, aspect of sort of how that back channel works. Some of it, though, is just using whatever intuitive skills you can look at and say, hey, Here's a horse running that they paid $150,000 for at auction six months ago, and they're now running it for $25,000. Well, people don't give away $150,000 horses. One of two things is happening there. Either they've already figured out that the horse is damn slow, or, um, or there's something wrong with that horse. That's just you know, using your intuition. Now, it doesn't mean you always get it right, but you use those types of things to sort of eliminate things. Um, so, uh, some questions that came in uh, or comments. Uh, hopefully that answered some of your questions there, William. Um, if a horse gets claimed, uh, a track announcer does tell everybody that, hey, uh, 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 yeah, there, there, was, uh, there was a claim and who claimed it? It's actually pretty darn exciting when you can see our name pop up that we actually claimed a horse, or if you're at the track, um, you'll, you'll see it, um, uh, and they'll announce it. So that's, that's pretty cool. And we have a pretty good relationship with some of the track announcers um, at some of the tracks. So sometimes they'll even give a little spunk to it when we actually, uh, we're actually the people that claimed it. Um, uh, our man Gary Quill's been answering questions too. Um, when you hear the phrase in for a tag, that means the horse is in for a claim. It's like a price tag, if you will. Um, so uh, another important thing, um, and it's not on our, our little graphic. And by the way, uh, we, will, we, we share that graphic with you. Um, you can actually find it on our website, the, the one that was part of the video here. Um, I'm happy to share it with anyone. Um, if you if you want to see the uh, the image that I used and shared, um, the um, the interesting uh, thing is that there's something called claiming jail. <laughs> um, so what claiming jail is is that when we claim a horse or anyone claims a horse at a track, that horse has to stay at that track for the remainder of that meet. However, that long is is two months, three months, four months, whatever time frame it is, they have to stay at the at that track. You can't claim it and then move it to you know, hey, I claimed it at, at Laurel and now I want to run it at Delaware. You're not allowed to do that. Um, they uh, they won't let you do that. The other part of claiming jail is if you claim a horse for ten thousand dollars, you have to wait more than thirty days 
if you're going to run it for the same level of race. So Slick William, we are, you heard me say, we're going to put him in and run him for 16,000. That's because it's less than, um, um, uh, it, that's less than uh, the, that's more than the price that we paid and it's less than 30 days. If we would have waited 31 days, um, uh, if we would have waited 31 days, then we could have run them for the same price or less. So that's how claiming jail works. It's, uh, um, that's, uh, that's, it's an interesting thing. And it's another one of those nuances that you don't understand. If you, if you're new to racing, it may not be perfectly clear that you would do that. And believe in just a little other tidbit on that. This is actually something that people have might even fight all the way to the Supreme court because the, the constitution, the United States constitution does restricts, um, trade, um, you can't make restrictions between states in trade. It's, it's, it's actually in the U.S. Constitution. So, um, so there have been legal battles of, hey, listen, you can't put me in jail if I want to move across state lines to sell something. Um, so that's, uh, uh, and once again, just to be clear, this isn't like formal jail. It's just a term. Um, it's not like TK is going to prison if we, uh, if we break the rules. They just don't let you. They call it claiming jail. That's all. I think um, I'm actually going to turn on Mr. Gary Quill. Um, I'm going to unmute G GQ. You're up. You wanted to talk about waiver claiming. Yeah. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, sir. Great. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a, uh, as far as claiming goes, there's a type of condition called waiver claiming and they came up with this so a couple years ago I think it started in California and uh, most states have adopted it it's where if you have a horse that generally runs in the claiming ranks and uh, the horse takes off for about six months whether the horse just needs a break maybe uh, there's something happened to them and you, you're incurring the expense of bringing that horse back to racing shape. Um, what the tracks will allow you to do is when you have that horse ready to run a race again, if six months has passed since his last race and you enter him in a claiming race equal to or higher than the last race he ran in, he can be entered under what they call a waiver, meaning even though it's a race that other horses are entered in for a tag, meaning someone can claim them, if your horse is entered under the waiver, that means no one can claim them because the track is sensitive to the fact that you've poured a lot of money uh, trying to bring this horse back into racing shape. So that's kind of like a handicapping angle as well that uh, you can look at thinking that, oh, this horse has been off for a year, and now they're bringing him back. If they're protecting him, then they, they, they have some interest, and they, they, they want to keep him for more than just this race. Maybe he's not ready to win that race. Maybe that's just kind of to get him back into shape. But uh, that's something that um, one of our horses, uh, ready it, if we so choose, could be under because she's been away from the races since last July, but her last race was, I believe, a ten thousand dollar claim. That's right. That's right. So the and, and thanks, thanks, GQ. And, sure. and for those that don't know, uh, Gary Quill is uh, is like almost like a professional handicapper at the at the end of the day. He he uh, he. Um, he writes a column uh, called uh, GQ that you can read in Racing Biz. Um, so, uh, so he's he and he's one of our he's one of our member owners. So, uh, so we've got we got we got all kinds of interesting experts on the uh, in the member group as as well. Um, I got a question from William. Uh, 
uh, in addition to physical health, do you filter horses by uh, optionality that they offer? Yeah, you know, sort of conditions. Yes, absolutely. So, so let me tell you, let me give you some of the things that we look for in that sort of first pass, that first screening. Um, uh, uh, when, when, when we're doing that first glance, what we're looking for is, um, hey, there's a horse that's, there's a horse that's performed well and is always near the money, first, second, third, you know, second, ideally second, third, fourth type of finishes, not a lot of wins, once again, because that means we're going to limit in conditions. We look at the speed figures and is, is this a horse that runs fast and has fast speed figures, but maybe is against tougher company at times and we'll be able to get it and run it against weaker company and win races with it. The third thing we look at is, is this a versatile horse? Can it run on turf and dirt, short distance, long distance? These are things that we look for. Other things that we really look for um, as well is, is that we'll look for things like, um, is this, uh, is this a, a horse that, uh, that has, is it, especially if it's a, a female horse, is this a female horse that is well-bred? Um, okay, it's well bred. That's important. Um, GQ's messaging me. The last piece that I would say we look at is, does it have any possibility of earning state bonuses? Now you might say, what the hell are state bonuses? Each state, well, not every state, certain states, Maryland being one of the best, run bonus programs where if the horse was bred in Maryland, born in Maryland, you actually can earn up to 30% more in purse money if it finishes first, second, or third. So, so back, to, back to our man Slick William, who is Maryland bred, if he finishes first, second, or third, we actually earn a 30% bump in purse money on Sunday. So also a good thing. So those are the things that we look at. Um, um, that's the, that's, those are the kind of things that in that initial on paper analysis. Then um, what I will do uh, is I will actually, if it makes the, if it passes the muster from that look, I will actually go watch a couple of its last races, especially if in the notes there was something funny about it. Like, you know, it said it was four wide. Was it actually four wide? Was it six wide? Who knows? Um, you know, because just because it says something on paper, um, I doesn't mean that's what it actually happened. So I'll go actually watch that as well. I'll also, when I go and look at a race, I'll look and see, did the horse pull up funny after the race? Because you can usually see that in the video as well. Because that could be a sign that something was physically wrong with it because during the race, they kind of pulled it up. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. I was at Gulfstream uh, this past weekend down in Florida. And there was a horse that I found a little interesting. It ran okay. We weren't going to claim it, but I watched it. And after the race, the jockey got off the horse almost as fast as he could get off the horse. Um, he didn't even jog it fully out, which probably told me something was wrong with that horse. So I made a note to make sure that I'm not interested in that horse for the next race because just to, you know, it's just one of those things that bubbled up. But all of those things sort of go into – what we're looking for. There's a lot of nuances. And um, it's one of the interesting things as for the members in the club, you can't expect to be able to do all of that. And it takes a team. And that's, that's kind of why we, we do it the way we do it. Um, and it gives the people the taste of all of that without all the risk and exposure. Um, that's, uh, yeah, so that's, that's how claiming. I wanted to talk a couple minutes for a couple of you who are, 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 are not members of our club. Uh, Wasabi Venture Stables was built to allow anyone in a sort of risk-free way become a horse owner, a, a horse racing owner. Um, you pay $99, that gets you in the club, and then you get to choose which horses that we are already a part of. We are already own them, we're in this with you. Um, you choose up between one and 5% that you want to own of the horse. 
Um, and we, that's all the exposure you'll ever have. You have no ongoing expenses, no ongoing vet bills. All of that is on us until the horse we settle. Um, but if the horse loses money, you don't owe us any extra money. The, the, all of the losses are on us. Um, and that's sort of how it works. It gives you all the thrills with almost none of the risk. And, uh, you can find all of that at wasabistables.com and, uh, and join. Any other questions about claiming or how we work for that matter? Hopefully that was a good session. I, I, I actually, I was, uh, I was really quite happy with uh, really great questions from the, from the group. Um, just a little piece of news. Like I said, Slick William is probably, we're going to enter him tomorrow. There's no guarantee that he gets in the race on Sunday, but the odds are very good um, that he'll be in a race on Sunday. You'll see an announcement for all the uh, club owners. Uh, you'll hear an announcement tomorrow um, afternoon, probably when it's official that he's in the race. Um, and we're probably going to throw a couple parties. Uh, so if you are in the New England area, we're going to throw a party at my house um, on Sunday. You can come on over, bring your friends even, and we're going to watch the race and eat snacks and drink a lot of bourbon, probably. And uh, for those that are down in the Maryland area, I think there's going to be a group of people that get together to go to the track and uh, be at the race itself. So we're, we're going to organize that as well. Um, so anyway, but you'll, hopefully you'll hear more about that tomorrow. Any last questions? Hey, thanks, William. I'm glad it was good for you. <laughs> and Gary Quill's going to be taking pictures that uh, 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 taking pictures of our win. I'm sure we'll be, and I'm pretty sure you'll be in the winner's circle too if that happens, which is also a great thing. If you get to go, if it wins, you're going to get to be in the winner's circle. So, well, thank thanks everyone, and uh, I, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for coming tonight, and uh, I, I hope to see all of you soon. Take care. Have a great night.